Welcome to Epiphany. My name is Pat Baker. And my name is Alan Baker. God calls us to grow our relationship with God, connect with each other, and serve the world. Thanks for watching our broadcast today. I hope you enjoy watching today's service. Jesus comes to be baptized, he leaves the hidden years behind. The years of safety and of peace to bear the sins of humankind. The Spirit of the Lord comes down anoints the Christ to suffering, to preach the word, to free the bond, and to the mourner comfort bring. He quench the dying flame, and what is bruised he will not break, but heal the wound in justice dealt, and out of death his triumph make. O Spirit, help us be like Christ to live in love and charity, to walk in truth and justice now, and grow in Christian dignity. Welcome in the name of the crucified and risen Jesus. We are thankful for your presence here this day. Two announcements for our Epiphany community. First of all, uh, uh, note that an email was sent out on Tuesday with our communion schedule for January and February. And so, uh, at least for the Epiphany season, we're going to have communion on the first and third Sundays like we've had it uh, during the Advent season where you come in on the Pennington Lane side and then exit out on the Pensby side. And then a reminder to all voting members here at Epiphany that we have a congregational meeting. Our annual meeting is scheduled for 1 p.m. on January 31st and that will be by Zoom. We will have more instructions about that that will come out later in the month. But in the meantime, please mark your calendars for the 31st at 1 o'clock so you can be present for that. Again, welcome, and I invite you to stand as our worship continues. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources, 
and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all that we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues. You know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen you may be seated hi everybody i haven't seen you since last year that sounds so long ago Actually, it's just been a couple weeks. Happy New Year. Have you all taken your Christmas decorations down yet? As you can see behind me and maybe in the reflection in the fireplace, we haven't taken ours down yet. We turned off our Moravian star and we turned off the tree lights, but we haven't taken the decorations down yet. But I'm not here to talk to you about the New Year or about Christmas decorations. I'm here to talk to you about something else. And I want to ask you a question. Do you wash your whole body more often during a week or during a given day than you do wash your hands? So which do you do more often, wash your body or wash your hands? 
That's right, you wash your hands, especially in this time of COVID. At least you better be. <laughs> anyway, these are all good answers that you have and you can share them with your parents. Now, our hands do not get dirty because we use them incorrectly. Our hands get dirty because we use our hands a lot. So we need to wash our hands a lot, even more so now in the time of COVID. What would happen if we didn't wash our hands? They'd get very dirty. You could see the dirt, but they'd get full of germs, especially in this time of COVID. And we could make ourselves sick and we could make somebody else sick. So we should wash, keep washing our hands. So I'm asking you about washing your hands today versus washing your whole body because in today's scripture, we're gonna talk about Jesus' baptism, which he was baptized in the Jordan River. So that's kind of like taking a short bath. And it was the only time he was baptized. I think most of you have probably been baptized. Do you remember your baptism? Do you remember where it took place or when it took place? That would be a good conversation to have with your mom and dad or grandparents one day this week. And then every time you wash your hands, you can think about your baptism or Jesus' baptism. So in the story, the Bible story that follows the story about Jesus' baptism, he finds himself in the wilderness where he has three chances or temptations to not pay attention to God. But in that story, we learn that Jesus was more mindful of God when he was in the wilderness. He did not allow himself to be tempted by other things. So one way we can keep God and Jesus in mind is to read passages of scripture. Another way we can pay attention to God and keep God in our hearts is to attend worship, either virtually or in person. And virtually is the only choice we have right now. And in still other stories, we see how Jesus attends he pays attention and he prays even hourly to keep God close at hand and in heart. And we choose to pay attention to God the same way Jesus did. Through our baptism, through reading scripture, through attending worship, and through praying. And speaking of praying, will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus who shows us how to pay attention to you so that we can better share your love, hope, and words with those around us. Thank you and amen. Uh, stay tuned for Encounter Faith, which will go on the website or be emailed out to you after our worship service today. Bye! A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us now sing the psalm responsibly. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord glory. 
makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as King forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. A few weeks ago, our family had the opportunity to do something that we've never done before. A dear family friend of ours that lives in Hawaii had their child, Ritter, baptized. Even if we weren't in a pandemic, there was no way that our family of four could have made the trip out to Hawaii to see Ritter baptized. But because we're in the midst of a pandemic, the good people of that Lutheran congregation there decided to set up a camera in the sanctuary so that close family and friends could be there 
over Zoom. Now, as we gathered on the video screen for that call, I was struck with a real sense of awe as people from Minnesota, Hawaii, South Korea, Texas, and North Carolina all came to welcome Ritter into God's family. It was a really cool moment when Ritter's godparents who live in San Antonio took themselves off of mute to say that they would do what they could to help to support him in his new life in Christ. Meanwhile, grandparents, aunts, uncles were all beaming to see him in a baptismal gown that had been worn throughout the generations. It was a moment when I began to realize just how interconnected we all are as God's people. All throughout the world, literally, people were coming together on a Sunday night to watch this one precious child of God be baptized into the body of Christ. It made me think of the countless number of saints that have been washed in the waters of baptism and joined to Christ as God's beloved sons and daughters. Every January, Christians across the world take the Sunday after Epiphany to celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Now this year, we hear about Mark's account of the baptism. Mark's details, like a lot of his gospel, are very sparse. After a lot of information about John the Baptist early on in our gospel reading, we have just a few short sentences about Jesus going down to the Jordan, being baptized by John, the Spirit descending like a dove, and God the Father's voice saying that Jesus is his beloved son. You are my beloved son. In Jesus' baptism, we are told that he is God's beloved son. It is a common thing for many of us on this day to reflect on what it means to be a baptized child of God. Part of what happens in baptism is that we are united to Jesus in his life, death, and resurrection. And as those waters are washed on us, whether we were a little baby or maybe a little bit older than that, we are given a name, a beloved child of God. This gives us meaning and connection throughout all of eternity. Meaning in that it shapes how we are called to live our lives. Connection in that it gives us a family, a home named the church to which we belong. Part of what is so telling right now is that those two words, meaning and connection, are something that a great number of people are longing for in the world. This past week, as we watched the horrific events unfold in Washington, D.C., and our country was shaken to its core, we saw people foolishly seeking meaning and connection. Part of what is, in fact, so troubling about conspiracy movements like QAnon is that they give false meaning to our country's narrative by having some sort of secret knowledge about what is truly happening. And as a result, they create these false stories that begin to spread like wildfire, and they get promulgated as quote-unquote truth. So much so that even some well-meaning Christians have accepted them as the gospel truth. This, unfortunately, leads to vile and dangerous behaviors like what we saw this week. Something so important as meaning gets distorted. And because of that, people's lives were ruined and even people died. The same is true with connection. Those who would follow foolish conspiracy theories 
like this would find comfort in the fact that they can have connection with others. And then they take something as beautiful as community and turn it into a nightmare. Being a baptized child of God means that we say no to that sort of meaning and community because it does not give glory to the God who has called us, nor does it point to Jesus. It points to empty promises that are most certainly not from God. In just a few minutes after the hymn of the day, we will affirm our baptisms. And before we say the Apostles' Creed, the creed that saints of all times and ages have said before baptism, we will be asked questions three different times that start out with this phrase, do you renounce? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? These questions have been asked of people coming to the waters of baptism for a very long time. Some of us might wonder why. All it takes is a week like this to answer that question. This week, a group of our fellow citizens, some of whom are our brothers and sisters in Christ, did something that shook our country. But what if, dear church, this were our moment to show what it truly means to have meaning and connection in our lives? What if we showed the world what it looks like to be a community that is different than anything else in all the world? What if we shine the light of Christ so much so that when people took one look at us, all they could say is, glory. Baptism means that we reorient our lives into another way of thinking and living. It requires us to shift our actions and our beings so that we would say no to the empty things that are anti-Christ and to say yes to the things that show forth the God of life. In just a few minutes, after we say no to a particular way of life, we will say yes to another way, the way of Jesus. This way is the way that we have been since we have been a part of the church. When God reached out to grab us in the waters of baptism, God said to you, you are my beloved child forever. You are loved. You belong. The way of Jesus, the way that we are joined to in the waters of baptism, looks like this. To continue in the covenant that God made with us in baptism, we are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to, start, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. This is the yes that we make. And by the power of the Spirit, we live as God's people in the world, seeing, thinking, believing, and acting than differently than any other community in the world. All along the way, as we live out our baptism, God will give us heavenly glimpses where the heavens are torn apart and we hear the voice of God saying to people like Ritter and to people like you and me, you are my beloved child. Thanks be to God. Amen.
friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of our baptism into Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself. Enlighten us with the gifts of your spirit and nourish us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? Believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? To serve all people? Follow the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life with Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need, saying, Have mercy, O God. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins, let us pray, Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beast, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. We especially give you thanks, O God, that even in the winter months, you are at work in and through your creation. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely and for the benefit of neighbor. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, especially for frontline medical teams, 
those who clean hospitals, and those who attend the dying during this pandemic. We pray for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially Bob Eisenhower, Jimmy, Katie, and Jacob Lippard, Tenny Barker, Donald K. Miller, Barbara Morgan, Lou Morris, Julianne Golden, and those we name before you now. That God shower compassion, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For congregations as they worship, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, especially Jerry Hayes, Lemian Pearson, and the Earl Taylor family at the death of their son, grant them eternal peace in your presence. May their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. During this time, as we love our neighbor by staying at home, we ask that you share the peace with those in your home and send a card, an email, or make a phone call and share Christ's peace with others that need to know God's peace at this time. Let us give thanks for the word. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your spirit, bless all who receive this word that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be a light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Who art, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.